Hey guys, uh, Tyson's Honor here again with day number three in this uh, sales and uh, tips and marketing ideas series. Thank you again for tuning in um, and sticking around and for your comments. I really appreciate it. Um, so today's topic was Jesus a salesman. Well, I don't know if I'm going to go so far as to say whether or not I think Jesus was a salesman, but what I do know and what I don't think anybody would argue with, whether or not you're a Christian or not a Christian or some other faith, there's really no denying that Jesus of Nazareth was an amazing teacher and an amazing storyteller. And Jesus knew the power of using stories and metaphors to drive his story, to drive his points of his stories home. It's, it's the way he was able to relate with people. When they left, they remembered his point because of the story he told. And that's what we're talking about today is the power and the importance of using stories and metaphors when you sell. Um, and I'm not talking about making up stuff. I'm talking about using um, stories. I'm not talking about telling lies. I'm, t I'm talking about actually telling a story to a client, maybe a story of another client that did such and such, and this is why it was powerful for them. Um, great salespeople know the power of stories and metaphors, as do great preachers. I mean, how many of you have ever been, if you've been to a church service, um, this has happened to me a lot of times, I've left church and I, I would go home and I, I'm like, God, I don't remember... I don't even remember anything that that service was about, except for that one story pastor told. That was really good. I like that. That was really funny. Pastors know the importance of telling stories. It, it gets your attention, and it helps you remember a story way more than you're going to remember a bunch of facts that somebody throws at you. So if you're trying to sell by throwing facts at people, stop. I mean, facts are important. I guess do that some, but be sure to use stories and metaphors to um, to drive home the point of those facts. That's really, really important. Um, let me uh, let me tell you a, a quick story myself. See what I'm doing here? Telling a story to drive my point home about the story. Um, I I used to be a music teacher, for example, and I had client I, not clients. I had students that still come up to me. I'm talking ten years. Um, ten. I had them in class ten years ago when they were in. You know, sixth grade, and there, there are students that will come up to me today, 10 years later, and they will say, oh, hey, Mr. Zahner, do you remember that story you told about your dog po pooping in the yard whenever I was in sixth grade? That was really funny, and I don't know what in the world my point would have been in music class for telling a story about a dog pooping in the yard. I'm sure I had some sort of point, but uh, that kid remembered that story. That stuck with him for 10 years. If you're trying to drive a point home, what are your clients going to remember? Think of it like this. If I have a, um, I'll use this from, since I'm a photographer and I'm selling photography products and photography services, I'll use my business as an example. But you can apply this to any sort of business. If I have a client in my studio, let's say it's a wedding client, what if, what's going to be more effective? If I, if I have a wedding client and they're thinking about booking me for their wedding and I, and I think it's important that they book an eight hour package instead of a six hour package, okay? And I don't push an eight hour package on a client if they don't need it, but if I believe that they need an eight hour package, what's gonna be more effective? It Me saying, here are the facts of why you need an eight hour package instead of six hours, or would it be more effective for me to say, look, I'm gonna tell you a quick story about a bride that she booked a six hour package and um, she had an amazing venue to shoot at. It was, this is a true story. I don't, I'm not making the story up. We shot her wedding at, um, at Bush Stadium um, and, uh, in St. Louis at the Cardinals Stadium and because they were big baseball fans. And she wanted all of these amazing pictures and she didn't have time for them. And she felt rushed and she felt stressed throughout her entire day because she didn't allot enough time. She, she ended up spending a little less money on the front end to save two hours off of her wedding day, but in the end, she wasn't able to get the products, the pictures, the locations that she wanted because she was rushed. 
and never, nothing ever goes according to plan on that wedding day. I might even inject a story about that. I might say, look, I was shooting a wedding one time where the mom forgot to bring the hoop for the dress and they had to drive all the way 30 minutes one direction and 30 minutes back. Nothing ever goes according to plan. What do you think that bride's gonna remember when she leaves? The facts or the stories? She's gonna go, oh man, I don't, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't wanna be stressed on my wedding day. I don't, He's right, Something, nothing ever goes according to plan on a wedding day, so I guess I probably better go ahead and book the two extra hours. Telling the story of other brides and what's happened in those experiences will drive the point home in terms of, uh, uh, of what sale I'm trying to make. And once again, please understand this. Sales is not about being manipulative. I wouldn't sell a bride an eight-hour package if she didn't need one. I wouldn't. If I think she only needs six hours or four hours or however many hours I think she needs, I'm going to suggest to her honestly what I believe she needs. But it's important for me as a salesperson but also as a service provider to set her expectations and say, look, it's really important that on your wedding day you understand what you're going to get and what could happen if you don't book those hours. And by, setting those ex by telling a story, I've set her expectations and she'll remember that story. It'll drive the point home. So um, anyway, I, I hope, uh, I hope uh, this makes sense to you. And um, I, I hope you start using stories and metaphors, uh, finding a way to do that in your sales. It will be so powerful and so effective. So back to the question of uh, was Jesus a salesman? I don't know that I'll give a direct answer to that, but if you go back to what we talked about on our first day, what is sales? Sales is helping people um, fix a problem. If your intentions are right, you'll make sales, right? And Jesus' intentions were to help people, okay? Well, like I said, whether you're a Christian or not, that's, that's inconsequential. Jesus was about spreading uh, the idea of love and helping people solve their problems and fight their struggles. and um, anyway, at the, at the risk of sounding like a preacher on, on, uh, on the pulpit, uh, I believe that there are some correlations there to be made, and he did that through telling stories. And, um, you know, we need to get this idea out of our head that sales is a four-letter word, you know, that sales is a bad thing. If you get it in your head that you're simply trying to help people, and these are strategies to help you do that. If you believe in your product, you're simply helping people find a way to get what they want. So uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. And uh, if, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, feel free to make comments. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to my YouTube page. I, I hope to be posting lots more of these videos. Thanks again, and uh, all the best of luck to you in your sales efforts. Bye.